everyone and welcome back to my channel. Let's play Alley of Blood. So we're going to go straight into battle here. To begin with, I'm going to pick my specialist skill and I'm going to go for Stone Hex. This works really nicely against melee classes, especially classes like Tempest, Barbarian and Crusader as well. So that's why I generally pick this in Alley of Blood and also sometimes in Shadow War as well. So for this, my team is pretty balanced. We've got a nice mix here. We've got myself as wizard. We have a necromancer, a crusader, and a barbarian. This is probably one of the best matches that I've had in a long time for Alley of Blood. Normally I end up with a full team of another class or a full team of wizards or um, against a full team of barbarians or something like that. So it was actually quite nice to see quite a balanced team on both sides for this match. And I'm interested to see how this will go. Now, I don't recognize any of the names of the players, but if you do see your name here, please drop me a comment and say hi. So a few things to remember with Alley of Blood is that you do not have your combat stance active and you also do not have your alternate main hand and your alternate off hand. So when you're putting your build together for Alley of Blood, please ensure that you have the right essences on your first main hand on your first off hand because your second ones won't come into play whatsoever. Same with the legendary gems that you've got equipped. If you want the effect of your legendary gems, you need to ensure they're in the right slots for this. So I actually had to change around some of my legendary gems to make sure that I had ones like Wolf Your active because that is one that I want to use. Now, also in Alley of Blood, everyone is equaled out, so it is an even playing field. So this means that whether you're new to Diablo Immortal or someone that's been playing since the beginning, you'll actually have a decent chance at winning and getting a nice match in this battle because your levels and everything, your damage, everything like that is equaled out and it makes it a lot more fair of a PvP mode. So the build that I'm using today is the one that I normally use in PvP and Shadow War. The reason why I thought I'd try this in Alley of Blood is because I have quite a lot of success with it in Shadow War. Although I've used it in Alley of Blood before and not had luck, hopefully this will be different today with the balance that I actually have on my team. Obviously having two melee and two range classes is going to make quite a difference to the battle and whether or not we will win it. So, so far we're doing pretty well. We've done quite a lot of damage to their first tower as you can see on the tool tab on the left. And we're also doing pretty good with killing the other players as well. So generally with Alley of Blood and also with Shadow War, which is obviously on the same map, I try to stay back and let the melee classes fight closer to the towers while I try and keep the enemy team away from our towers and keep the guardians away from our towers as well. Because as I've said before in other videos, I have had instances where the guardian has literally won the battle for the enemy team. So it's just important to take them down as it is to take down the enemy players. Now it looks like one of the people on the opposite team has actually just left the battle, which it really bugs me when people do that. I know that obviously there's sometimes real life instances where you do have to leave, but a lot of the time I find that players ditch their team if they think they're going to lose the battle. And I've had it before in Alley of Blood where someone did ditch our team and then we actually won with just three of us. So it's not always what it seems. Sometimes you can actually win the battle in the last few moments, even if you are doing really badly. Um, it's never worth leaving the battle and also you can actually gain a lot of the task completion for the event just by staying in the battle even if it's not going as well as you hoped. So first tower destroyed and we're already on to damaging the second one and trying to push back the enemy team as well. So this is going pretty well, nice and smoothly for our team. And as I mentioned, this is probably one of the most balanced teams that I've had in Alley of Blood in probably in the last year of playing this, to be honest. I normally get really bad matchmaking for Alley of Blood, so it was nice to actually get a team that I thought at the beginning, yeah, we can win this one for once. I've had it previously where I've entered Alley of Blood and I've been on a team with two other wizards and then one Blood Knight, and I was like, you know what, this is not, this is not good matchmaking. And then on the opposite team, we've been against three Barbarians, but I don't think it has the same class balance mechanic as Battleground does. So class balance doesn't seem to really come into play with Alley of Blood. And obviously because the teams are much smaller of just four players, you do have that risk that you may end up on a team with all the same class. So I think we're about to experience, yep, my first death in this match. So we've done pretty good to get as far as we have across the map with um, just one death. And we're doing it all right on the kills and assists here as well. Unfortunately, with Alley of Blood, you do have to wait a little while for the resurrecting time. It's not quite as long as it is in Conqueror PvP mode, um, but it's still not ideal, especially as the spawn point is obviously all the way back down the other end of the map. So as I said, we're at their Crystal Heart now, and hopefully we'll be able to destroy this pretty quickly and win this battle. Now, one thing that's a little bit frustrating is like always with Alley of Blood, I've not been able to collect many of the shards from the players that I've taken down. And this means that my damage and size isn't as 
high as some of the other players on my team and on the enemy team as well, which is super frustrating. It happens to me quite a lot with this mode. And I think, yeah, <laughs> I had a feeling I was going to die again there as well. Um, I had too many players against me at once, but you can see as well, I'm back to the beginning of not having any extra damage boost. Um, so hopefully we'll still be able to give some amount of damage. Um, oh, I did manage to kill that player there, and it looks like we will have probably got an assist for that second player that went down as well. Uh, the damage over time that one of these players has is pretty high, so I'm guessing they maybe are using two poisons, so maybe Seeking Ball and Viper's Bite together. Um, I generally use this in PvP, however, I didn't have space to have both equipped in this build. I wanted some other for gems. I wanted to make sure I had Starfire, Bloodshot, Jade, and Wolf Hure as well. So Alley of Blood completed and it was a victory for our team. I'm super happy with that. It's the first victory that I've had in Alley of Blood in months. Every time this returns, I normally just fail. Um, we weren't MVP for the match, but we were second with the score and we had a decent amount of assists and kills there as well. Now, my second match of the day for Alley of Blood. I don't really know what else to say about this, but it was a shit show. The matchmaking demons decided that it would be a good idea to make a full wizard team. How great is that? So yeah, myself and three other wizards on one team. And obviously as a range class, the damage reduction is lower than a melee class. And you can see here, they had a crusader on the opposite team that was using the stone hex. Um, and then obviously just being able to take me down really easily there. So this match was just a total mess. And we did try our best, all the wizards that I was with. We did work together the best we could with our skills that we had equipped and with the builds that we had equipped. But, you know, we, you don't really stand a chance when you're against these melee classes and when the matchmaking has kind of put you up against a much uh, more balanced team with regards to having a decent amount of different classes on one team. So, yeah, this was a total mess and this is more the expectation that I have with Alley of Blood and also the reason why I don't ever really play it. The only reason I do do Alley of Blood is simply for the event center rewards. As I've said before, gaining those event center seals or sigils, whatever you want to call them, and gaining the rewards from that is generally the only reason why I even bother with Alley of Blood each time it returns to game. It's probably my least favorite returning event to Diablo Immortal. Every time this comes back, I kind of like eye roll and sigh because normally oh, it is just a complete mess and a shit show for me so that one as you can guess was a defeat now we didn't do too badly here this was the overall result so at least i did get some kills but i also died a hell of a lot and so did a couple of my teammates as well so yeah super disappointing however from completing these battles and this is actually just from the first battle i did gain most of the rewards so there's only three remaining rewards for me to collect with alley of blood um, unfortunately, one of them is to get three wins and eight wins, which I don't think I'm even going to be able to achieve that, even if I play this every day. But that is it from me. Let me know how you're getting on in this game mode. And for now, I'll see you in the next one.